Greetings Turians, Chaos here. Today we're going to be continuing with another tutorial for Harbinger's Puzzles. Here we go. For this next puzzle, we're going to go back to what we learned in the previous tutorial. In Harbinger in the Forge, there's a puzzle at the very beginning that wants you to pressurize the room and essentially what's happening here is it's uh, a puzzle where it wants you to light up the gem spark meter to exactly the point indicated and it uses very similar mechanics to the sliding door it's just that we want it to stop at a precise point and also it has a bunch of levers or switches beneath it some of them add a certain number of ticks to the meter, some of them subtract, there's a reset as well. So we're going to go ahead and look at designing that. The first part of this that I'll be building is the display. So this is what is going to indicate to the players what's happening on the puzzle itself. It's uh, not necessary for the puzzle per se, but it does give them a visual indicator of what's going on. So I'm just going to make this uh, an even 8 wide. But you can make this as long or as short as you want. The longer you make it, the harder the puzzle will be. The shorter you make it, the easier the puzzle will be. And I'm just going to just give this a little border to make it a little look a little nicer for now. Um, we're going to start by turning all of these gem spark blocks off and then we could just get rid of that wire in this switch and I'm also going to place down seven switches and what these are are going to be the inputs for the puzzle so we'll have just seven switches here the top row which I'll go ahead and paint green addition switches so they'll make the meter fill while the bottom row which I will paint red will be subs uh, subtract subtraction switches a little tongue tied there <laughs> and uh, these will make the meter go down and now if you add more than what's visually displayed here it'll just stop here so say it's already full and I add an additional 8, then when I subtract it's just going to start sub subtracting from this point. And additionally if it's empty and I subtract a ton it's just going to stay here. And if I start adding after I've subtracted a bunch from 0 it's just going to start from 0 and fill up from here. So you can never have less than or more than what's indicated visually here on this puzzle design. So the next part that we're going to work on is actually just wiring up the uh, display. We're not going to worry about wiring the switches yet. So I'll just bring up some wire just like this. Right there. So I'm just going to bring this up a little bit to here and just for now I'll just leave this here and I'm going to switch on to some logic gates. I'll start with AND gates and I actually primarily work with AND gates. Most of what you will be doing in a Terraria wiring you can just accomplish with one kind of gate. So I'm just going to place one here and then I will need a row of eight logic gates to match up with the eight wires that we have below. So we have three apart and we have eight in total. Oop, that's too far. Can't count today. <laughs> there we go. And then we're going to do the same thing above it, except it's going to just be shifted one over to the left. And we'll need space for a lamp here, 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 gap, and then the logic gate. And we'll just top this first one with an on lamp, and everything else will be turned off. 
and then we'll just top all of these with double faulty lamps. Just like that. And then we're going to start wiring the progression. So just with my other, uh, just like with the other progression logic systems that I have, I'm going to make this little L shape. And instead of going all four colors on a row, I'm just going to alternate between two colors. And I'll get into why I'm doing that later. So it's just going to be red and blue up here, just with this L shape, like this. And do the same thing with blue. So this will progress the lamp this way, which will in turn uh, add to the meter. So this is our addition line. But we also want this to bring forward lamps on our subtraction line. So we'll just go back to red. We'll bring this straight down. And whenever this one actu uh, activates, we want it to activate these two lamps. Same thing here. But we also want it to deactivate the lamp behind it. Obviously, there's no lamp back here, so we don't need to worry about it there. Like that. So now, whenever this line is activated, it'll push the lamp forward in a sequence, but it'll also push the lamp forward in a sequence down here, until we get to the very end where the lamp just turns off here and turns on here. And the only action that we could do is activate this one to subtract. So once it gets to the end, we cannot add anymore. It just disappears. Now we're going to switch over to green and yellow and do the same thing that we did with red and blue. However, I'll just fade these for now. We're going to do it in the opposite direction and on the bottom side. So we'll start with green here and we'll make the L shape in this direction rather than the other carry it up here and connect up there and we'll alternate switch to yellow and do the same thing that we have done up here but down here and now we have the progression system wired up so if I were to say Take some green wire out here and put a switch on it and just flip it. You'll see that the lamps progress from the left to the right. It looks like I missed a little segment here. So let's see what's going on. Ah, I just forgot to. Uh, connect this blue line to the space below it. There we go. So little mistakes happen like that. It's always best to check your work, which is actually why I wired it up right now. Now if I were to run a red line here up to a similarly placed switch, the same thing will happen in subtraction. But first, before I do that, I need to place a junction box on any point where this red line meets this red line. So since we have red on yellow it kinda looks orange so anywhere that happens we'll just place these three junction boxes. And Now when we flip the switch you'll see that the lamps progress in the opposite direction to the left until it gets to the very end. And you could just change what direction you're going at any point in time just like this. And so now we have our addition and subtraction lines done and we'll be moving on to connecting them to the wire base, the display below. So when these activate the display, actually every color here, red, blue, green, and yellow, will be activating the same point in the display depending on if you're adding or subtracting. So we need all four colors to activate a single color of wire down here. So to avoid crossing wire colors, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make like a little uh, buffer, decoder, whatever you want to call it. So I'll just place some AND gates beneath these AND gates.
and I'll throw on some and I mean lo um, on logic lamps and some off ones on top of them like that and we're just going to bring all of the uh, wires from up above and connect them down below so we'll just mimic the pattern that we have here so you see that we have red and yellow right here feeding to this lamp we're going to do the same thing here feed it into that lamp Ah, a minor state mistake that I made here. We actually need a gap between uh, this row of logic gates and the one above. Otherwise, we have a cross wire issue that just happened there. So I'll just lower everything here. And now we can just go ahead and connect all of the colors. And once we have that, we just need to connect these wires to the logic gates above. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go like that. And you just follow the pattern that you see down here. And now, if I throw these switches back down you can see that whenever I uh, activate the addition switch the little gem spark block in the display progresses one at a time all the way to the very end and then when I subtract it progresses back to the left one at a time until it turns off at the very end and that's pretty much done. The only thing that we want to happen is to have all of the lights behind the currently active one stay on. So say I have it in the 3 position, we also want 1 and 2 to remain on. So the way we'll do that is by taking the wire color and connecting it forward to make sure that it uh, is activated by every gate in front of it. So anything on the left will be activated by anything on the right. So we'll just take this red line out and make sure that it's connected to these four gates. And we'll do the same thing with this blue line here. It starts here, add a blue there, add a blue there. Green starts here, add a green there. And uh, we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now you'll see that we're almost completely there. We'll have a line of four there, but then it'll break. It'll start over at one and fill in four there. So the only thing that we have left to do is to just fill in that break. And how we'll do that is just by adding one more logic gate here. That's similar to the ones that we already have, like that. We'll carry the red line from here to that logic gate because whenever this is on, we want all four of these to be on. And then we'll just bring all four colors from here, red, blue, green, and yellow, and put it in there. So now whenever this one turns on, then this one turns on, both of these are on here, all the way down, there, all the way down. And whenever this red one is on, which will be every time any of these are on, this will also be on and carry the line down. And now you'll see that the display is working completely. It'll just fill the meter as we go from one into the other and then deplete it when we subtract. The next thing that we want to work on is these switches here, the addition, the subtraction ones. I'm actually going to add a lever as well and this will be a reset lever. And the reason why we need a reset lever is for this puzzle I'm gonna make it to where you can only use one of these switches once per reset so if this is like plus one and this is plus three and this is minus one etc then if I do plus one once I can't just do plus one over and over and over again it'll be locked out the first time I use it until I reset the line 
at which point I can reuse it again. And we don't want these to just be simple like plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, minus one, minus two, minus three. We want it to be a little more complicated. Uh, so say this will be like um, plus three, plus four, plus five, and plus eight. And this will be minus one, minus four, and minus five, or something like that. And reset will always subtract eight, so that way even if the bar is completely filled, and you press it, it'll just fire to completely empty. Now, keep in mind, if you have a longer meter, you'll need your reset line to be as long as the meter is. So we're just going to go ahead and build those counters now. Uh, probably just build it right up here. And we're going to start with the reset line. And so we're going to be using the spear trap, which will travel through this little tunnel that I'm building and press these teal pressure pads, which there will be four of. So it'll press one, two, three, and four, come to the very end, and since it's a spear trap, it's going to travel back in the opposite direction and press one, two, three, and four again. It's very important that you have a space here, because if I put a block there, it would travel one, two, three, four, three, two, one. So you'd only get seven presses out of here instead of eight. So if you want an even number, always make sure there's a gap at the end. If you want an odd number, always make sure that the pressure pad is right up against the block. And I do want an even number here. Another thing to note about the spear traps is they do not press pressure pads on the first two tile spaces when they initially fire. So a pressure pad here and here will not get pressed when it's uh, fired. So press or putting them down here won't help me. But it will press them on the return trip. So if I were to put two more here, it would not press these. So it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And for that reason, I always make sure that I have a gap of 2 between the first pressure pad and the spear trap. So this will be our reset line. And then I'll go ahead and build some subtraction lines here. Next, I will do the addition lines. Now from here, now that we have all of our uh, reset, subtraction, and addition lines set up, we're just going to place the uh, logic gates above them. And these logic gates are going to be what ensures that you can only press an addition or a subtraction line once per reset instead of infinitely. Otherwise, the puzzle would be completely too easy to solve. So we're just going to put these AND gates flanking each of the uh, spear traps, except for the last one, because this, again, is the reset line. We want it to fire every time. We don't need to gate it. And then we're going to put a on logic lamp on the left one of all of these and off one on the right one of all the pairings and then double faulty lamps on top of those so from here these are just going to have little miniature progression systems so I'll take this red line here and it's going to progress the lamp over here and this blue line will progress the lamp back. We also want the red line to activate the spear trap. So I'll just go ahead and wire all these up using that pattern. Now we also want to go ahead and wire up the uh, teal pressure pads 
to either the addition or the subtraction line. So since we have addition on top, I'll just go ahead and bring this all the way out like this. And we'll do the same thing with red down here. And what we need to do next is wire up the switches and the lever down here to be carried up to the top. Okay, now that we're up here, I'm just going to take the colors and connect them to the uh, addition lines. So I prefer to have my smaller addition lines uh, to the left, so this will be the smaller digit, this will be the plus eight, and the same thing down here, this will be the minus one, and this will be the minus five. So that means instead of being red, blue, green, yellow in this direction, it'll be red, blue, green, and yellow in that direction. And we're only going to connect these to the left side, not to the right side. So I'll just continue the pattern just like this. Until finally we come to this yellow reset line which will feed directly into the spear trap rather than into a logic gate. But additionally, we want a reset line to hit all of these logic gates so that they progress the lamp from the right side to the left and reset it. So we'll just bring yellow up like this. And we have some crossed wires here with yellows, so we'll need four junction boxes. And we'll just place them right here so that way we have the yellow line here not intersecting with the reset line up here. If we go ahead and go down to the bottom and test this we should see addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction, reset, that should fill it all the way and everything looks like it's working perfectly. And that's the guts of the puzzle done. The only thing that's left to be done is to kind of uh, pick where the output signal will happen. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to mark this position which is number six and that is what we'll want the light to be resting on in order to send an output signal and let's just say open this door right here too tall right there so we want whenever the light lands on six um, like this maybe there we go. That would open the door. So how we accomplish that is we come up here and we find the number six position. So this is eight, seven, and six. And we just bring a wire out from this lamp like this. And this will be our output signal. And I need to make sure anywhere yellows meet, I put junction boxes, since I'm using a yellow line here. Now, this isn't all that we need to do, because you see if I just wire this straight to the door, anytime the light passes the 6th position, it'll open, and when it leaves the 6th position, it'll shut again. So you, saw, you heard the door open and shut rapidly there. You'll hear it open and shut there, open and shut there, etc. We just want it to only open when the light is resting in this position. So to do that, 
just cut this off. We're going to make a another little uh, contraption with spear traps and logic gates. So we'll just create a little tunnel like we did before. Now this needs to be longer than these. This spear trap needs to move slower than any of these. And the reason for that is because this is what will determine if the light is in the sixth position or not. So anytime the sixth position is reached and left, this spear trap will activate just like this. So instead of the door opening and closing, this spear trap will fire. If the light is in the on position, we want this to indicate that it's in the on position. We don't want it to indicate that it's in the on position if it's just passing through. So we'll put a teal pressure pad here. And again, the spear trap will not press this until it's on its return trip. And that's exactly what we want because we want this to be slower than up here. We'll do a little triad of logic gates over here. Oops. And the left one on the bottom here will be on, but these two will be off. And we're just going to have a single faulty lamp on top of each. And what we're going to do is we're just going to connect this teal pad to this logic gate right here. So whenever the spear trap shoots it's going to come back and hit this and obviously it's currently off nothing will happen however if we bring this yellow line down and put it in this lamp position whenever the sixth light is on this lamp will also be on and this is what will determine if the light is currently resting in this position or just passing through and to explain that I actually need to wire this up a little bit better as well so what I'm going to do is connect this gate to here and uh, I was just basically explaining myself a little too early connect this gate to here so it progresses that lamp to the right bring this one here so it progresses the lamp back and bring this down okay so what's actually happening here is whenever the sixth position is lit up it'll turn this lamp on and it'll fire the spear trap. If the lamp remains in this position when the spear trap presses this wire, it will progress this uh, lamp over here and it will open the door below with this wire. Like that. And Whenever the lamp leaves the sixth position, this will fire and it will shut the door and reset to this position. So now I could just go ahead and give that in an example. So we'll plus eight. We'll see that it fired, but the lamp up here remained off and nothing happened over here. And then we'll subtract. Same thing, it'll fire, but nothing really happens. Then we'll add, and the door opened because it's resting on position six. It's not just passing through. So this lamp turned on, the spear trap finished its firing sequence, activating this wire, which opened the door. Now if I were to, uh, which one's not? There we go. Move out of this position, the door will shut again. And there's only one other problem to address with this. If we go too quickly, uh, let's say here, I will add 8, 
in the spear trap will fire but if I subtract quickly and then add quickly you'll see that it didn't fire twice it only fired once that's because of the uh, internal cooldown of the spear trap and so now our puzzle is going to be completely off even if I were to rest in the right position it could potentially just not open the door and so to offset that we just need to build uh, a few replications of this uh, spear trap so I'm just gonna do four of them I feel that it's a pretty good number to just get around the uh, the cooldown of these spear traps so now that we have four spear traps here we don't want them shooting at the exact same time we want them to shoot in a sequence so we'll just put some logic gates on top of them the first one will be on, the other three will be off, and they'll all be faulty. And we'll just run this yellow wire through the faulty lamps, like that. And we'll just make a little progression system here with red and blue that will carry the lamp from the left to the right, and then back to the beginning we do want it to loop and then we'll just connect the output straight into these spear traps add uh, teal pressure pads and just run this green wire along so now whenever the light passes through or lands on position 6 it will fire a spear trap so if it enters and leaves you'll see it went in and went out really quick it fired two spear traps if it goes in and out real quick again it will fire two spear traps if it goes in and out again it will fire two but this time it's just going to fire one because it's only going in and if it were to leave fire once again and that is the design done. Landing in 6 opens the door. Leaving 6 close the door. And that'll be it for today's video. If you liked it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Thank you for watching. Happy building.